This is class three, and we're going to start to get into the more advanced techniques. So in this class, I'm going to be teaching you one particular operator and a sense for how the whole web works and how these operators that we will learn in today's class and in future classes will help you find exactly the results you need. Let's take a look. I want to start off by telling you how the web is organized. The web is, is, is kind of a big, messy place, and it's fundamentally, as you can see here in this diagram, a set of blue pages. So each one of those blue rectangles is a page and there's a link. So when you click on a blue link, it's actually taking you from one page to another page. Now, the stuff that Google can crawl is what we call the visible web. This is all the stuff that's easily findable through search and stuff that's not findable or that's not represented in Google, uh, the Google index is called the deep web or sometimes called the dark web. That's the stuff we can't find. But the stuff in a particular domain, in a particular web server, is all within one particular space. So for example, mycompany.com, that's one domain. The reason I'm showing you this is because you can have many, many different domains. So there's, for example, NewYorkTimes.com or uh, Google.com or Stanford.edu. Those are all different domains. Those are all different, represented here by circles or ellipses, and they have pages within them and links that go between the sites. So something, a page from my co mycompany.com can link to something in yourcompany.com. Get that? Now, pages that we don't see, those green pages in the upper corner, those are in the dark web. We never call those. Those are not findable through normal Google search. It's also important to remember that sometimes pages are different types. So we have regular web pages, we have images, we have movies, we have all these things. That's what I mean by the different colors here. In these classes, we'll show you how to find specific file types within specific locations having specific properties. That's what all these restriction operators are about. So let's start talking about what a restriction operator is. An operator is a special word we use to talk about things that you add to the query to make it do what you want. Here's an example. If I do a query like Tesla coil, that's a regular query. Remember, you don't type the square brackets. It's just Tesla space coil. Then when you add something extra like this site colon stanford.edu, that's the operator, the site colon is what you put in front of the argument that is stanford.edu in order to do something special to the results. So let's look at it this way. There are many different kinds of operators, but they all filter the results. So you have a base query like Tesla coil, and then you add an operator to filter or restrict or reduce the number of results. Does that make sense? Here's what I mean. Here we've got a space of results when you do a query like Tesla coil. So say there's 10 million results. There's a bunch of them there. Now suppose you want only the results about Tesla coils from a particular site like stanford.edu. What it would do is do the search query Tesla coil modified by the operator site colon stanford.edu and you'll get a much smaller set of results. That's what I mean by this diagram. The set of results when you apply an operator is always smaller than when you do the search over everything that is the unmodified query. Let me show this to you live. Suppose I do a query like Tesla coil, like that. You'll see here we've got 2.5 million results, a whole bunch of different results. But remember now, what I'd like to do is just to see what, say, stanford.edu has to say about that. So I'm going to add my site colon stanford.edu operator here using the site operator. And now when I hit enter, you'll see that all the results here are all from Stanford. Go to answer.stanford.edu, web and stanford.edu, and so on. You get the idea. They're all hosted on the stanford.edu site. We could do this same trick by but changing the site restriction argument. So here I said stanford.edu. Let's look at just government sites like .gov. This will search just sites within the US government domain. Now notice I, what I've done here is I put in .gov. I'll tell you a secret. You don't need the dot. So for example here, I just did got a site colon gov and it's the same set of results. So you can use .gov or dot or .edu or just plain gov or just plain edu and that'll work. But the one thing you can't do is add a space. So now I'm going to show you what that result is with the space between the site colon and the argument, that is, the gov here. I add the space, 
do return. And now, guess what? Some of these are from gov, some are from edu, some are from .com. So by adding the space, you've broken the operator. That is, it won't work. It's just searching for site, and it's searching for gov in this case. You get the idea. Space will break the relationship between the operator and its argument. Now, this is really handy to know because sometimes you can do a search like this. Let's do a search like site.gov. I'm going to search for business, workplace, accident rate. So here, what I'm showing you are web pages within the .gov domain that are all about, guess what, business, workplace, accident rates. One thing to notice here, for example, at OSHA statistics and data page, I know that if we went and looked at that page, there would be lots and lots of databases. Notice that we don't index the database contents. What we do is give you a link to that database, and then you have to use their interface to actually look at the data inside of that. That, again, is part of the dark web. Because the contents of that database are not a web page, we can't index them in the way we normally think about. Let's do another search now. Now, I happen to know that the word for fishery agriculture is called mariculture. So let's do that, mariculture. There's my query. And you can see it's a specialized branch of aquaculture, including the cultivation of marine organisms. Cool. But I want to find out what the if there are any .coms that are doing mariculture. And sure enough, there's a lot of them. There's the Wikipedia article there, a lot of news articles, a lot of coverage of this topic. Let's now see, for example, what we can find out from .edu. Again, a bunch of results. These are fantastic. So now you see how restrict operations work. By adding the site colon operator, you can limit your set of results to exactly the kinds of things you want to find. Notice that this works across all the different Google properties. So if I click here on the Images tab, click, now guess what? I have nothing but images of Mariculture from EDU sites. And we can change that. And let's do .gov sites. And now I'm seeing images from just .gov sites. Or I can click on News. And now I have Mariculture news articles from .gov sites. This is an incredibly powerful operator to have at your fingertips. It's probably the single most common operator that I use probably four or five times a day because I'm looking for a particular thing in a particular place. Site colon is the operator that will give that skill to you. So go ahead and try this now and do the activity. See if you can get the results that you really want.